Hello all, welcome to Oracle Fusion Hub's SOVA tutorials. Um, so far we have seen a lot about um, ADF and uh, uh, from here on uh, I'm going to plan a, a series of uh, SOVA tutorials and uh, the first tutorial is about creating a basic SOVA application and uh, uh, what all you need uh, if you are starting as a as in beginner. So right now the first thing you need to have is a weblogic server installed on your uh, machine and uh, apart from the weblogic server you also have need to have a server server installed on your machine and uh, I would be uh, covering uh, uh, on the setups in a later tutorial but uh, J developer, I mean the WebLogic 12C, the Oracle Server Suit 12C, uh, is so easy to configure that you, I mean, it's it's just one uh, uh, executable file that you need to download, and uh, you can pretty much configure it uh, uh, without much effort. So if you look at my uh, machine, I have uh, an admin server which is uh, uh, running right now and uh, I have a SOVA server which is running right now and I have a couple of other servers uh, which is like the BAM server and the OSB uh, which is Oracle Service Bus. Uh, right now they, they are not running it down. Uh, the reason why I, I, I mean, it's, I, I recommend uh, uh, not running the servers which you don't need is because uh, these weblogic servers eat up a lot of your uh, uh, RAM and memory and as such if, if you are not having enough memory on your machine then I, I, I suggest you to run the services what all you need and for this tutorial I just need the SOVA server and that's the reason why I'm running only SOVA server and how did I come to this page? You can, uh, um, you can simply log into your local machine with 7001 port and uh, uh, the console so so this is basically the url is just the local host hi i mean colon 7001 and then the console so that gives you the, uh, the this particular page after login so uh, uh, since i don't have enough memory on my machine the uh, i mean i have installed the weblogic server on a different machine and i am connecting it through uh, the lan port lan lan system and uh, so so this particular url might be different for you it depends on the installations and all so once you have this console part uh, the the one more thing that you need is an enterprise manager the, the em part so how do you come to this url the same same uh, host name and port slash em and that gives you this page so this is this is basically the the page that you have and you can see what all deployments that are being done and what are the servers that are being con uh, configured here and if you look at it 50% of my servers is up and running and 50% of my servers is down that's because i have not started my uh, the, the other two servers here so 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 this is pretty pretty much basically the em and uh, the server part so now um, since you have these two uh, working on your machine, the next thing that you want to uh, do is go to your uh, J Developer. Just fire, I mean, open open J Developer, and then uh, basically, I mean, let us see what we are trying to do now. Uh, I'll just so basically, um, we're going to create an application. And uh, this application will basically have a web service and uh, a mediator and uh, a database. So uh, I need a uh, I mean, this is basically a, a basic example that you find in many other tutorials and many other books. And uh, I mean, the easiness 
uh, of this particular example made me um, do this right now so it's very it's it's very easy to understand and that's the reason i employed i adopted this particular example uh, to discuss in this particular uh, uh, tutorial so uh, basically i need a web service where if i give if i give the web service a a credit card number so credit card number is my input and i i basically expect the web service to return whether it's a valid or invalid credit card number and uh, for this what you have to do is first go to the uh, database and uh, create a table called credit card info and before that uh, if you look at it i have connected <coughs> Through a user called Sova Demo, so it's it's nothing but a custom user that I created to uh, work on uh, the this particular Sova composite or the Sova project. So uh, basically, you can log in as Sys or the SysDBA, whatever uh, uh, system or whatever you have the SysDBA privileges, and you can create a user uh, like Sova Demo or Sova Test or Sova User or whatever you feel like doing it. And uh, once you create a a Sova user, uh, then basically the second step is okay. Uh, before we actually dive into it, um, I have to tell you that this particular example, like whatever you have this DB adopter, so you're 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 talking with the DB, the database right now. So in order to talk with the database, the first thing that you have to do is go to the console. You have to do a couple of setups so that you can you can be able to the web logic server can be able to talk with the database. So what you have to do is go to the services and go to uh, this data source and uh, I'm, I'm basically working on uh, SOA 12C so there might be a couple of uh, different options that you will see in 11G and all so it's better you always start uh, I mean if you are a fresher you can always start on 12C so uh, when you click on the data sources you will be uh, coming to this particular summary of JDBC data sources page and uh, uh, just just query for i mean here when you are starting you have to uh, click on the new and uh, create a generic data source and i have already created a, a, a generic data source which is sova demo database so I'll, I'll show you i'll not save it but i'll show you what to do so when you click on the new database you will be having this particular screen and in the name just put whatever name that you feel like so my name is what i put is sova demo database and jndi name it should be a unique name so jdbc slash forward slash and then give sova demo database and uh, the database type should be oracle i am not dealing with other database types so right now i am i have an oracle database and then that's what i'm using so come to this part and database driver that you are using is thinx make sure that you have xa thinxa here okay so and then click next then uh, okay i have this database already existing on my machine so click next and here i mean this is nothing but just you click on go and here you give the database name like your xe and uh, your host name most probably it's a local host if you have installed it i've installed it in a lan in a in a different computer so mine is different 192 whatever that host name and uh, point slash slash xml and the port is 51 username I've created my own username here, Sova Demo, so I gave that. You can give whatever you have created. Password, and then click on Next. And then you will have all these details here. So just click on Text Configuration, and the test should be successful. Only then uh, the self web logic server is able to connect to the database. And uh, once you do that, there is this Finish button. You click on that, and it will give you this particular a row 
so so imagine that we have done the, all that right now so i have a new data source that is available which is sova demo database and uh, uh, make sure there is a proper chain di name that because uh, these these names that you give here uh, we will uh, refer it elsewhere okay so now once you have a data source available on your weblogic server go to the deployments and create a connection pool so how do you do that you go to the deployments and you you have this list of deployments available here search for db adapter because that's what you are going to use right now click on it and go to the configuration go to the outbound connection pool and here you basically need to click on new and when you click on new it will ask what type of connection group that you want you want whatever that is defaulted and give this chain dna i mean eis db is is what that is default but sova demo database is one that i used you can use uh, whatever you have you want but <coughs> make sure it's an inconsistency with the data sources and all so click on finish which will give you this particular record so after you created that go click on that particular uh, uh, outbound connection pool and then in the properties you have this xa data source name and click on property value and then this field is will not be populated for you so you populate the field like you remember you have created a data source jdbc sova demo database as i mean you have given this particular name in the jnda section so give the same jnda section here and click on enter don't do not click on tab that will not save you save save the uh, property value just click on i mean just hit on enter and then click on save button so so that gives you i mean that may that is what you have to do uh, uh, when you are going to use a db adopter okay so just go here and see the db adopter and db adopter has a proper plan available and if db adopter is not available then you have to create that as well so how do you do that uh but but db adopter is something that is uh, uh, a generic one so uh, i'm sorry I, you didn't, do not need to create that so so once you have a db adopter when you're doing this um the system might ask you for the deployment plan if if you don't have one uh, initially then what you need to go do is you go to the uh, uh, whatever your oracle home folder and uh, in 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 the sova folder create a folder called db plan and then when when the system asks you for db de deployment plan you give that path okay so that is also uh, uh, required here so once you have these this this particular uh, setup done then come back to your uh, okay come back to your uh, this part d database and create a table called credit card info and what are the things that you need for credit card info you need an ssn you need first name last name cc number credit rating and status uh, for this tutorial uh, i i don't use in everything here i mean ssn will always be unique so ssn will be my primary key you just need that i don't mind whatever you want for first name and last name cc number you need it and status is valid or invalid you need this you need this particular data it's very pretty straightforward i don't need you need a, um, a proper db scripts for that so you can create your own table like this and you can use it
So once you have this table ready, uh, what you need to do is just plan for what you're doing. So you have a web service and uh, its input you give a credit card number and uh, its output should be either valid or uh, invalid. Okay, so that's pretty much uh, what you want. And how do you do that? So for, for these particular things, what, whenever you're creating a web service or whenever you're the most part, the, the most things uh, that you do in JSOVA or the J developer, you need an XSD for that. So, so all the services talk in XML language. And uh, in order to talk in XML language, you need a contract. You need to know, I mean, different systems need to know how that XML language is. Like, like when you are talking in two languages, I mean, you, you are talking in one, let's say, uh, let's say two people are there, uh, person A and person B. And uh, okay, both the persons uh, agreed that they speak in English language and uh, uh, person A if he says uh, come then person B should know what's the meaning of come and both person A and person B should be in sync and if they are not then that's like gone case so, so what makes person A and person B uh, in sync is when both persons know the language or know the grammar in particular and if they don't know the grammar then that's like gone case so so I see gra language is like the XML and the grammar is like XSD and when I say language it's not actually the language it's basically the communication or the actual words that they speak so so now I've created uh, something like this an XSD and uh, um, I'll just simply take this part and I'll create one separately for you okay XSD dot schema so that makes this complete loop and what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about something like um, so these are the uh, header values basically uh, for an XSD to work and uh, um, I'll go to I'll, I'll, I'll dedicate a separate uh, uh, tutorial uh, on discussing the various XSDs, um, the XSD basics and all. But but right now, uh, in order to give you a feel of what the SOVA application does and all, I'm not going to uh, discuss deep into the XSDs and all. But a very basic level, um, you should be able to create one XSD. And uh, so so basically, uh, this XSD, whatever this. Uh, uh, XML, NS, namespaces and all that we will discuss later. But let us talk about something like um, the, where is that? Sorry, in here. So, so the input. So what will be the input? So I'll say XSD hyphen element name equal to, uh, I'll say credit card request so this is my uh, my element and uh, this element is of complex type and uh, so so I'll, I'll just show you what I've done that 
so where is that so input is my credit card number okay so XSD element and here inside it I have an element name equal to CC number and type equal to XSD string okay so that's my element which is going to be my input and then I have another XSD element so I have my input here and what's my output the status so name equal to credit card status and type equal to XSD string and then I have another element name equal to error and type equal to XSD string okay so this makes uh, should I change save uh, I'll not save this since I have already one file so I'll use that file so if you look at the credit card XSD this is basically the same thing that we have XSD element name is credit card status request complex type and why you use a sequence so you have you have a couple of options actually one is sequence like if the uh, XSD is come in uh, sequence one after the other or you have all which is just the all when you have a all it means uh, I mean you can use all the elements and all so it's basically uh, you have different types of uh, 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 different uh, I mean attributes that you can define here so basically uh, right now I have just the CC number so we'll just use the CC number and that's it so now um, so this is my uh, XSD and uh, Okay, I'm not going to say anything. Okay, now, so you have your XSD ready. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to create a new application. Come here and click on uh, Solve Application, and the name is name of the application is Credit Card Validation Zero One click on next project name is credit card service 01 so I'm going to create an empty uh, composite right now and it's it will take a while to create that okay my um, um, the composite has been created and now you have three different sections here one is exposed services another one is components another one is external references so um, right now I need a web service first so go to the components and go to the soap so in 11G and all you have web service now you have uh, something called as soap so just drag the soap to the exposed services so it's a soap service the name you give as uh, credit service and then the WSDL URL uh, right now you you have to generate it from the schema you have the XSD so generate it from the schema so how do you do that just click on that cock button and uh, uh, nothing no change here interface type so this is basically a two-way interface like you give the response I mean you give the request and you wait for the response and you get the response 
when it is one way you give the response i mean you give the request and then you do your own activities you don't wait for the response and uh, asynchronous is you give the request and then you don't wait for the request you do your own activities and at a later point of time you get the response back okay so right now uh, we'll talk about all these scenarios in a in a different uh, tutorial right now we'll use synchronous interface which is like you give the request you wait for the request and you get the request and you don't do anything in between so my input you click on add a new message part and and part name just put input and then for url you click on that box and the type chooser you uh, you basically import from a schema file and what is your schema file the one that you have created and uh, i suppose i placed it in uh, I placed it in schemas and credit check SXSD. So once you get this, you have this copy option. Maintain original directory structure for imported file. Do not do that. Uh, let let J developer have their own directory structure and don't impose some directory structure there. And schemas is credit check SXSD. Just click on OK. Now you will have these things. So, so the, the input to the web service is actually a credit card status request and inside this credit card status request, the, the type of this is a CC number. So just click on OK. Now you have input which is perfectly aligned with the credit card status request. And what is your output? Click on this. <sighs> just to differentiate it, write output and then click on the magnifier prox you have credit card status as the output click on that click ok and if there is a fault you have to get that fault also so right now I'm writing it the part name is error and uh, error click on it so, so you have basically got all this WSDL so that's the WSDL that you will be having so now just click on OK and then save it. Now you have a web service here. Perfect. Now I want a database that I can connect to. So take the database, drop it in external references. And uh, I'm going to call this as credit validation service click next and the connection just click on the plus sign and uh, give the connection name uh, so I have my local host that's configured and the username is sova demo sova demo and the host name since I have used a LAN enabled I mean, I installed something on, the, on my LAN. I have to give my host there. So just click on text connection. It's a success. So you're able to connect to the instance. Here you can give your own uh, host name, which is mostly local host. So click OK. And don't give local host here. So give the one. And now you can't change anything here so just give the one that you have there okay I mean you have set up in the web logic and 192.168.1.3 test connection it's working and click OK now you have so our demo database and uh, uh, if you can't remember what's there in the JNDA name for that particular web logic server you can always go to the JNDA tree and uh, it will take a time because it tries to connect to the server 
So instead of integrated WebLogic server, if you have a um, host that's set up already, the application server, then click on that. If you don't have that in the dialog box, then you click the positive sign and uh, give those details. So here, go to the DB. You have this DB here. So now I'm not able to drag it. And if you see, you have SOVA demo database that's being configured. Okay, so just click on that and that will come here. So next, what you want to do, what type of operation you want to do now? So, so right now, I just get the credit card number and I have to tell whether it is success, I mean, whether it is valid or not. So that, that boils down to just perform an operation and it's just a select statement, nothing else. So just click on next, import the tables. You have the schema SOVA, just query that. You have the credit card info, click on OK. And then click next. You have to define a primary key if you haven't defined it in the database. So my primary key is CC number, just click next. What are relationships? I don't have any relationships because I'm using single table. So click on next. Now, now what, what is my select clause? I don't need SSN, I don't need first name, I don't need last name, I don't need the credit rating. I just need status. The primary key and the status, that's it. Now, now I have the query ready, but I don't want the query to be executed and return me tens of rows for just one credit card number. So I need a clause, a where clause. So just define a parameter here cc number click ok and uh, click on the sql and write your own where clause so my where clause is the first argument the query key is cc number select cc number this is like select cc number status from credit card info table where the cc number column is equal to the parameter ccnb that's it. So this is CNMB, we'll link it to the input parameter here. Then click next. And there is nothing to talk about much. Just click on finish. You have a external service ready. And right now I can, I can very well couple these two things, but I don't want to do that. I want to show you uh, the use of a mediator um, to do this. So just click on the mediator and click here. So I'll just name it as root request and I'm going to define the interface later. And why I said I define the interface later because it's easy to drag here and the interface will be automatically generated for you. So now, now my input will be this credit card service and my output from the root request, I'll route it to the credit card validation. Okay. And uh, how do I map which variable I have to take from here and then map it to here? I'll show you. So click on the root request, double click on the root request and it will give you the root request and plan. And here you have routing rules here. Okay, so come to this routing rules. This is the input and click on this transformation, which is an XSLT transformation and uh, create a new mapper file. You just click OK. It will for the default things and uh, click OK. So now you have a mapper file here, mapper.xsl. So my input, this is from the web service that is coming on because if you look at it, credit card status request and then you have a CC number. And how do you map this? You map this to the CC NB because you have to give CC NB as the output for this particular, this thing. So just drag and drop an arrow here. Simple. So that mapped. Your CC number will be mapped to CC NB. Pretty much simple 
and then the synchronous reply what you get from the reply so just click on the transformation box click on a new mapper file default whatever that you have click ok come here now you have the credit card info and then you have CC number and status that is coming from there and uh, basically you want the status to be mapped to the web services credit card status click on save all finish that's it you have a mediator that's not only going to root request from from and to of the services it can also transform things it can also do a lot of other manipulations but this is basically the straightforward the pretty much uh, working example once you have this ready you are going to deploy it and how you are going to deploy it right click on this project and click on credit card service 01 that will give you a dialog box you are going to deploy it to an application server so just click on next click on next and then uh, are you going to i mean i'm sure i'll show you just create an ad additional application server i already have uh, two application servers available here but for the sake of uh, teaching it I'll, I'll, i'm going to create one more so another localhost 2 is one that I'm going to create anything that you give as a connection name and give the password click next and then give the host name and then test connection and the one one wrong thing that people do here is uh, look at it the demo domain name mismatch so the reason is you are giving base domain here so if you have configured a different domain other than base domain i mean for most people for most beginners the do base domain will work but some people might have created more than one domain so in that case give the right domain there i have created an FM fmw domain so i'm giving that domain here so now my test connection will be successful 12 out of 12 test successful then click next click finish and you will have uh, the local host 2 in your application server so just click next and it will look up if you if it has a server server yes i have a server server so click next and finish it then you are going to be deploying that credit card service 01 to your local host click on deployment so it's building it's sending the archive and it will take a while to deploy and the deployment is finished perfect now go back to your browser go back to your em and uh, just query the sova server in the sova folder you have the sova server it will take a while because my i still have issues with my lan I'll just pause the video for a while so that it will not waste the time and uh, here uh, when you click on the default it will have like I have other uh, services that are there so but you look at the credit card service zero and this is the one that we have um, installed I mean when we have deployed so the click on credit card service zero one and click on the test button so here in the request section you have the cc number so just give uh let's see this is a valid serial num cc number so just give this cc number here and click on test web service and in the output if you see you got a valid value 
perfect that's working for you we'll try another cc number which is wrong so this is a wrong cc number so give that click on test web service and it gave you invalid perfect and if you are having any trouble just click on launch flow trace and it will give you what what has happened for this particular instance see first it is credit card service then it went to root request root request another i mean it it just invoked the credit validation source everything is completed so no error messages it's all perfect so this is a sample um, tutorial <coughs> so that you will be familiar with what's going on um, in the sova as a beginner so in the next tutorial i'll try to enhance this and add a couple of other features which is like file adopter and uh, so on and uh, um, we'll continue further thanks for watching it good day bye bye